to another GCSE economics video with me, Mr. Goff, from mrgoff.com. Today's video is about the importance of price elasticity of demand. To understand the importance of price elasticity of demand, we need to examine its effect on total revenues. Let's have a look at this with an example of a business that is selling muffins. At present, the business is able to sell 100 muffins for one pound each for a total revenue of £100. Now let's consider the effects of a 10% increase in price from £1 to £1.10. If our muffins have an elastic PED of 2, the decrease in quantity demanded will be 2 times the amount of the increase in price, so 20%, or 20 less muffins will be demanded. We can see that if we sell 80 muffins for £1.10, we only make £88, so our total revenue has gone down. However, if our muffins have an inelastic PED of 0.5, then it will be 0.5 times 10% or a 5% decrease in quantity demanded. If we sell 95 muffins for £1.10, we would actually increase our total revenue from 100 to £104.50. Now let's consider the case of a 10% decrease in price from one pound to 90 pence. With an elastic PED of two, the 10% decrease in price leads to a 20% increase in the quantity demanded. We can see that when we sell 120 muffins for 90 pence each, we make 108 pounds. So our revenue has increased from 100 to 108. On the other hand, with an inelastic PED of 0 0.5, the 10% decrease in price leads to only a 5% increase in quantity. If we sell 105 muffins at 90 pence each, our total revenue would go down from £100 to £94.50. As we have just seen, knowing your PED is essential for producers to know whether they should raise or lower their prices in order to achieve more revenue. Those with elastic PED should lower their price to achieve higher revenue while those with inelastic PED should raise their price to achieve higher revenue. Some producers are also able to charge different prices to different parts of their market. For instance, flights and hotels cost less if you can afford to use them outside of the busy school holiday periods. If you catch the train and you have to go at work times in the morning, you have to pay a higher fare than those that are more flexible and can travel at off-peak times. A cinema might price tickets differently for children, students and pensioners, or they may even have discounted prices for daytime, also known as matinee screenings. Farmers often face inelastic PED, so a bumper crop may not turn out to be the blessing that it first seems. Some of their crops may end up going to waste because there's no one to sell them to, and as you'll see when we look at the price elasticity of supply, it may just lead to lower prices for all of their goods. Consumers don't really calculate PED for themselves, but they are still affected by it. For instance, the government knows it can raise taxes on inelastic goods like fuel, cigarettes and alcohol, and the demand won't go down much, so they'll be able to raise more money for the government. Consumers who can be flexible will get offered better prices. There are many industries and many services where if you use them at off-peak times, you will receive a discount. Sometimes the elasticity of a product changes throughout the year. This can be seen with things like hotels and flights during school holidays, but it can also be seen with a product like ice cream, which is going to be more desirable in the summertime and therefore may not be discounted as much. That brings us to the end of our look at why PED is important for producers and consumers. I've been Mr Goff for MrGoff.com. I hope you'll join me again for our next GCSE economics video, which will be looking at introducing the topic of supply. Bye for now.